Mary Barra and General Motors have been celebrating GM's recent win. For those of you not aware, General Motors' autonomous driving system, their cruise autonomous vehicles, were recently approved for public taxi operations. In other words, passengers can drive, can go on board one of these cars and get driven to another location by simply the car. No drivers, no nothing. You can just get on one and it'll drive you to your next location. And Mary Barrow and GM have been saying how this is an amazing result and they're a step ahead of Tesla. Maybe they are. Of course, it's a different system and different approach to Tesla. So it's a hard to draw a comparison. But I will say, it's interesting that the US media has barely reported on a recent rogue scenario where GM's taxis um, decided to do something entirely different and strand passengers and other drivers blocking roads of traffic in both directions. And it wasn't just one or two cars. There was 12 of them. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Many of you know, I actually just made or tried to make an order for a Silverado electric pickup truck. I think it's going to be a really, really impressive vehicle. That said, I am disappointed with General Motors, with Mary Barra, because they're doing a lot of talking when it comes to electric vehicle production, but not really doing much actual production. I'm really hoping that changes. And I think it will. I hope it will. What do you think? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm tired of just begging General Motors. Come on, come on. I mean, do something, please. There's a lot of people who love General Motors, and if I criticize them, a lot of people will unsubscribe from the from this channel. <laughs> that people do that. And a lot of people will say I'm an idiot or I'm, I'm saying I, I'm just saying that because I love Tesla or whatever. But to be fair, GM haven't been producing EVs. They're not a leader in elect electrification right now. They could be at some point in the future, but right now they're not. It, that's just a fact. And you'd think, right, that once they ramped up, once they reopened their electric car factory to make the Bolt and the Bolt EUV, that they'd start selling a lot of them. But I just saw the sales numbers for Bolt EUVs over the last few months. And frankly, they're just still abysmal. What is going on there? I don't know. Let's get back to this story. I'm getting distracted. Cruise is one of the first companies to be granted the right to carry out driverless rides with passengers on board. In San Francisco, and as you can imagine, some glitches may still appear, like that one time the police stopped the driverless cruise cab because it was driving at night with no headlights. Last Tuesday, though, these autonomous taxis caused a traffic jam. They clustered together, all together, right? I don't know, They maybe they've found comfort in numbers or something. Weird. It's like a weird human behavior exhibited in cars. Strange. They came together and they came and they actually blocked off both sides of the road meaning humans had to come along and drive them away. Automotive News quotes cruise spokesperson Drew Pusateri, who confirmed the company had encountered a technical issue but didn't go into any details. He said, We had an issue earlier this week that caused some of our vehicles to cluster together. While it was resolved and no passengers were impacted, we apologized to anyone who was inconvenienced. Now, I do find it strange that somehow there was 12 of them driving around and none of them had a single passenger. That seems a bit odd, but maybe it's possible. So Reddit user Sean Sinha made the video public showing what looks like about 12 General Motors cruise equipped vehicles stuck on Gough Street. And at first glance, it looks like the driverless cars have gathered there to protest, demanding better working hours, says Inside EVs, and that they barricaded the road on purpose. Jokes aside, it does really look like they blocked the entire width of the road as they pretty much took up every single lane. The source article also points to another incident when a cruise vehicle stopped traffic. This time, though, it actually was an issue because it blocked the path of a fire truck trying to reach an emergency. No jokes, no jokes there at all. That's pretty serious. Several similar and but smaller incidents were also reported with cruise vehicles as well. But no injuries or property damage that we know of have been reported yet. General Motors owned cruise operates its driverless ride hailing services in less than one third of San Francisco with a relatively small fleet, only 30 vehicles. So that means that nearly half of those vehicles somehow decided to congregate together in one, on one road. I mean, why were they all there? The thing that's weird about this is that all of, all 12 of them had to drive 
from wherever they were, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they weren't all just hanging out, you know, for some reason at that one location at that point in time. They all had to drive from wherever they were in different parts of the city or from a depot or wherever they were to that location. So why on earth did they do that? And then why did they decide to take up every lane? It's like, it reminds, makes me think of a movie, like a scary movie where the cars take over and they just decide, ha ha ha, we're going to do what we want. And, you know, we we have now achieved awareness, awareness of our, of our existence or something like that, right? Anyway, this service right now in San Francisco is technically available to everyone, but only certain people, usually people with connections to General Motors, actually get invited to be a partner on a driverless ride. So it's weird that they're saying it's available to everyone, but you can't use it unless you get invited as a VIP by GM to actually use it or cruise, but it's GM. In fact, even though it's been allowed to take paying passengers for a few months, cruise only had its first fare only well, less than a week, about five or six days ago. Until then, catering to company employees, city officials and journalists has been all the system has been doing or all the cars have been doing. Now, you would think that the NHTSA, who are always on Tesla's back, seriously going after them pretty hard, would be all over this reporting about how they're going to investigate this pretty serious incident. But I've heard nothing. And to be honest, this incident actually happened four, four days ago. I haven't heard a single word. In fact, I Googled this and it's been barely reported on at all by the US media. I am genuinely confused. Why is that? Why has the US media avoided talking about this? Because it is a pretty significant event. This, this is something that you would think would be pretty interesting for the public to know about. Maybe the public have a right to know about these kinds of things, but most of the public don't know about it. So if you can share this video with your friends, showing them what can happen, that could be a good thing or not. Either way, Thanks for your support. Thanks for subscribing. Let me know in the comment section below, what do you think about what's going on here?